Job done. Exactly, job done, entertaining game, a great day out for Chesterfield, um, great endeavour from them, you have to applaud the, the, the work ethic and it was nice to see them get a goal actually at the end, unfortunately we, we've conceded but I think you can see the fan reaction and I think sometimes the FA Cup, you know, it's nice to just have everyone involved almost, that's a bit of a t nice, too nice thing to say yeah. but <laughs> I think when we, when we were that competent early on it was, it is, um, it's nice to see some of the youth come on, it was just an overall what a lovely day. It's exactly it, Dan, and it? it is, you know, we don't want to get sort of trivial about it because it's still a football match of importance, but yeah. it is a nice day out. You know, Chesterfield fans have made a lot of noise, they've come down in, in droves, they've had a yeah. good day out, hopefully they've enjoyed themselves, they've made a lot of noise, yeah. been really good for the game. Chesterfield brought the game to us as well at times, played yeah. some really good football, they've impressed a lot of people, got their goal, but ultimately it was in our hands to make sure that we got it done. We remained professional, yeah. we didn't get caught up and become one of the giant yeah. killings. Ultimately, you know, it played out to be how I'd imagine most people were expected it to. We dominated, we win. Chesterfield give it a go. They would have expected us to win as well. Um, the youth get to play. There's some good performances. Get some minutes in the tank, um, and and hopefully it's, it's some more mo mo more momentum to build on Tuesday. So there's two wins in a row and two cup competitions. So uh, hopefully, you know, going into these kind of trickier fixtures coming up, um, we're well equipped. Absolutely. Let's get onto the game on social then. And it started uh, pre match. Obviously, quite a lot of talk about Chelsea first. And here's another one Flossie, uh, her first ever Chelsea game today. Both her and Max are sixth generation Chelsea fans. Amazing, that is. Congratulations. Good work as well. Very, very lucky charms, quite clearly. Uh, and this, brilliant news for every Chelsea fan. Thiago Silva is negative. Good. Yes. So hopefully we can welcome him back very soon. Uh, and obviously, two very impressive debuts today. Uh, Marcus Bettinelli, probably performance deserved a clean sheet, didn't get yeah. it, unfortunately, but but Lewis Hall as well. I tell you, we'll speak about him individually. Let's start with Marcus Bettinelli, because yeah. I thought he, he dealt with everything that was necessary today very well. And it's, I suppose, quite a difficult job being the third-choice goalkeeper, yeah. because you're probably told at the start of the season, you may get a cup game, but... It highly depends on, yeah. you know, just being ready when called upon, and he was. I think he's had to obviously manage his own expectations. He probably knew where his standards stood when he, when he came in. And it's, I, I was reading quite a lot about how, how the standards are in training with them and, and how they demand more and always reviewing and training with the goalkeepers around him. Kepper and, and Mendy really re helping raise his own standards. So he was very much ready coming into this game. And it showed. He, w he didn't seem nervous. He didn't seem you know, a little bit shaky, which sometimes you can expect, can't you, if, if a goalkeeper hasn't had that much exposure. Um, but, yeah, he'd be disappointed with, the, with conceding that goal. But, actually, I think there wasn't a great deal he could have done about it. Um, and, yeah, I think, overall, he'd, he, he'd go away happy. Makes a good save, actually, for the yeah. goal, doesn't yeah. he, really? He gets, it, gets a, a knee on it and, and stops it going in. Um, we'll talk about Lewis Hall in depth a little bit more in a while. But I think maybe it's, it's worth mentioning because... Because he's, he's at the start of his Chelsea journey, making his debut as an academy prospect. Mm -hmm. The fact we two, had two academy players that wore the armband today in, in Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Andreas Christensen, that's a big deal as well, isn't it? That's showing that pathway that we speak about so often is not only producing good footballers, but characters and leaders as well. And that's what you want from a Chelsea player. Yeah, you know, we're, and, and just very good, well-balanced, lovely young men yeah. as well, you know. Great footballers, but you can see they're very level-headed, hungry, determined and kind of embody everything that Chelsea's about. So it's good to see them both wear the armband. They're not typically the, the, the characters you'd expect to see with a captain's yeah. armband. You expect almost a, a, someone who shouts and runs around and, you know, <laughs> throws his weight about a bit more as, as your captain. But they are, you know, there are loads of, of big characters on that pitch and all of them, you know, deserve the right to be the captain. A, a Frank Lampard lead by example. Kind of that that yes. kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Lead with your actions rather than than vocally. Uh, let's move on to the game on social. And obviously, it started uh, with Timo Werner. Uh, move started by Hall on his debut. Another from Cobham Kovacic, unstoppable when he sets off like that. Werner on the score sheet can't get better than absolutely right, Damien. What what a start and what a start it was, Claire. I mean, you, uh, what's, I speak to you because you foresaw this. You saw <laughs> yeah, you saw an early goal coming. <laughs> but again, exactly what you'd want, and especially if you're Timo Werner as well, a player that's yeah. you know been out of the team for a while now because of illness and injury, etc to get back in, back on the score sheet. Dan mentioned at half-time, impressive in midweek and, and, yeah, really kicking on from that. I think this is actually that injection of confidence that he would have needed scoring that goal going into the, the next few weeks that we have, the, the tricky period of, of games and the tricky opposition. I think he needed that. And I think, to be honest, the whole performance from everyone, it was just a continue, continuation of the momentum. And as, as you're saying, you know, the, the, the combinations, Kovacic, the first goal, I, what I just loved is the way he just picked the ball up and just drove and just absolutely sliced open the Chesterfield midfield. And, yeah, it, it was nice to see Werner getting on the score sheet and, and getting extra minutes in. Yeah, absolutely right. Let's continue the game then, because uh, quite a lot of 
quite a lot of chat about this overreaction tweet of the day from <laughs> 2022 <laughs> goals. Timo Werner won, Messi and Ronaldo zero. I know my go. Dan, what can't speak can't lie, mate. Facts Listen, are facts. Numbers don't lie, you know? <laughs> numbers don't lie. Right now, Werner is ahead of them both in 2022. Um, but I was quite impressed with his performance as, as a whole. Um, obviously, he's coming back to and, and he's coming back from a hammy. Um, so the, the, for fast players, they're it's always pretty careful, risky. Yeah. You've got to be quite careful. But he seems brave. He's still driving at players. And he, as time goes on, he'll get sharper and sharper and sharper. And I think we're still waiting for him to really kick. I mean, he, he made 14, was it 14 assists last season? So it was 15, yeah. 15 was, assists, yeah. you know. It's even in a, he was in contributing. A, so exactly. Yeah, even yeah. in a season where people sometimes criticised him, the numbers don't lie, you yeah. know. Timo gets the numbers. You're absolutely right. And again, we, we've spoken about Timo countless times on, on this very show, Claire, about as a player, how mm -hmm. much you'd have enjoyed to play with him, a player that is so selfless yeah. in his running and a player that, that makes spaces for other players. And, and also, a good character. He seems like a really yeah. cool guy. And you see all the videos. Yeah. There was even a prank video a little while ago <laughs> that, that he takes very well. He's, he's very much a part of it. And he's, he's someone that you want to do well. So when you've got a nice character like yeah. he has and, and a good temperament, but also a willingness to work hard, you're always going to find a place in good teams, aren't you? I think selflessness. Uh, and that just shows in abundance the fact that he's getting these assists in. Just, uh, it's not even that the assists are fantastic, but it's the the movement off the ball to to create the you know prior to the assist, the, you know his vision, um, his his self, yeah, the you know the way he just will will run and run and run, and not just for himself. He uses his attributes, yes, but um, I think he does seem like quite a sh like just a nice guy. Mm. To be fair, they just all seem like nice guys, don't they? Like, I just think it's, it's nice having someone in the team that you're willing to work hard for and you know you look up, you can count on him. It's, it's like the, the we talk about Kovacic being the pass before the assist. Timo is the run to make yeah. the space for yes. the assist, isn't he? He's, he's got that about him. Uh, Callum hudson Adoy, let's have a little chat about him because obviously he got, to, got a, a fantastic goal today. Really great finish from hudson Adoy there. I'm begging to see him shoot like that more often. I suppose that is, that is a good thing, Dan. That, that is something that the yeah. Chelsea fans want to see. We know he's got the ability. We know he's got the quality. But again, suppose different positions allow different spaces. And yes. no, again, nothing against Chesterfield, but you're going to find more spaces against Chesterfield than you are against a Liverpool at home, etc. Well, I think he said it as well he loves coming in off that left flank probably because you know he can get that sight on the, yeah. on the on the far post and today he cut in and just whipped it you know and that's what that's what everyone knows because we know he's got that in his locker we're greedy and we want to see yeah. him do it all the time you know <laughs> whether it's attempts or but he's one of the players that can afford to be brave on the ball whether it's running at uh, running at players or or shooting at goal because he's able to do everything we want to just see him do it more, you know, and yeah. today was a, a good performance. We alluded to it at half-time, Claire, but what does he need to do now to reach that next level? You know what, I think it, he, he's, he's got his overall game at a certain level, and now he has to just, I think what Dan was saying, just be a little bit braver, actually. He, he, you just saw his ability, yes, against Chesterfield, but he does have that spark that other players don't have. So now he's raised his level and he's aligned you know, with what he was lacking last season, maybe a little bit defensive, maybe a bit of concentration, decision-making. I think the more risks he takes whilst his levels of everything, of the basics are there, that's, it, that's when we're going to see him really kind of grow into the player he, we, we all know he is and he, ha, ha, what he already is. Absolutely. He's definitely flourishing already, isn't he? And, and another... Cobham tweet has to be about it today, doesn't it? Because obviously Callum being one of those. But one thing I smack about Cobham kids is the versatility a lot of them have. Lewis Hall is a centre midfielder but doesn't look out of place making his debut at left back, left centre back really as well, isn't it? Simmons are the same, uh, plays centre midfield and centre half for the PL2 side, played right wing back against Brentford. And again, didn't, didn't really look out of place at all, did he? Lewis Hall is indeed a promising talent. Next Cobham wonder kid question mark. Is it? It's a very good question. We'll talk about Cobham in general, Dan, because Lewis Hall has had a fantastic debut today and he's been brilliant. But I suppose he's kind of... He's a, a summary of how good that development side is. You know, yeah. we, we saw the goals at Hart. on 5-0 today. Charlie Webster starts in that team more often than not. Harvey Vale starts in that team every single week if, he, if he's available. Lewis Hall's another one. Uh, Lewis Baker as well yeah. that comes on to There's so many players that step up and do that. There is that level now that we talk about. We talk about consistent, consistently yeah. of... You create players, you create people. And now there is almost a ready-made standard that you go, I know I can take anyone from yeah. that PL2 side and they'll yeah. fit in and they can play to a level where you could you could put them into a Premier League game tomorrow and they'll do your job. Yeah, it's scary because it's like a conveyor belt. It's just another one yeah. and then another one. And they seem to all have almost no weaknesses. You know, They're able to take the ball both feet, shoot with both feet, comfortable dribbling with both feet. They, they seem to 
to have so many strengths and all the weaknesses seem to be getting, you know, taken out of all the kids from Cobbins' game. It, it, I'm guessing it's ruthless down there because yeah. you, you, right. they are all excellent. <laughs> really, you know, technically you're so good. Um, and do you know how, how good you actually have to be technically to be able to just play anywhere? Yeah. That means your touch has to be good, your pass, your decision making, all of these different things that, that make a good player. Hardly any of them played in their positions and they didn't look out of place, you know, in the Premier League team with a crowd that are used to, to, mm. to seeing the best in the world all the time. They look just fine to me. So, it's, yeah, it's a testament to Cobham. Claire, when you were coming through, did, did you have to do this? Did you have to play out a position when you get your opportunity at the first team level? Did you, did you kind of have to show your versatility and be adaptable and ready when the calls come? I think you do, yeah. You, you, you kind of you take what you get, don't you, right? If, you know, if you're called upon, you, 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 get, you get placed in that position. You, you have to know that your, your jobs and your role. You also have to put yourself in them positions in training. You have to you don't just go in your, into your comfort zone. A lot of times you have your own choices, you know, in the lower ages, where, where, you know, what position you want to play. I made a mistake quite early on of always choosing the left because I've left footed is quite rare you do end up having that vision only then because you're only seeing that part of the pitch but great advice I got was to make sure you're playing you know right side make sure you're playing in midfield make sure you are getting all different all different opportunities to, to really improve your spatial awareness because it's not just being able to technically do it it's being able to do it with someone behind you someone you know to the side of you you know you have to be able to read the whole pitch um, and I think yeah the more exposure you can get of that and I did try to do that I did end up very much left-footed <laughs> but, um, but uh, I think yeah I think Dan's got it spot on there like the, the way that these players can just play anywhere um, it must be ruthless. <laughs> well, when your left foot's as good as your clay, you only yeah. need one in yeah, fairness. True. But true. <laughs> exactly what Claire's saying there about Callum Hudson Odoi in terms of, you know, he's played right wing, left wing, right wing back, left wing back, he's played as a 10. He's still so young, Callum, yeah. that all of that movement, and it might be slightly frustrating as a Chelsea yeah. fan because you go, I want him to have a run of games, I want him to see him yeah. blossom in one position. This development stage of his career, he's still going through now. In five or six years' time, this will be invaluable. The, the research, like you said, playing at left back at times, playing yeah. at right back at times today. And just as a complete player, you know, like Claire mm. said, you, you have to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. You don't really hit your prime for a few years yet, anyway. It's just that Callum was one of the first through that academy. So we've been waiting for a while, but he's he's just still just a kid, you know, essentially. So. Um, He's just the most experienced of, of the, the younger generation. So it will all make sense pretty soon, yeah. I'm sure. I think we're all like waiting for it and we're, we're getting impatient. But when it does happen, it's going to be something very special. Absolutely right. Another Cobham graduate that uh, doubled his goal tally for the club today to this season. This is it here. Having waited years for, for a first Chelsea senior goal, Christensen is now flexing a full range of finishes. This one, a headed lob. That's a great description, Liam. Like, like you said earlier, Dan, it's like a cushioned yeah. header, really, isn't it? But again, <laughs> fantastic player. And he, he's, he's a little bit like that, isn't he? He's, yeah. he's supposed, as a centre half, you, you assume these big, imposing, mm. sort of overbearing types that are going to thunder into tackles. But he's so neat and tidy on the ball. He's like a centre midfield that can just drop in yeah. and do He's just such a clever footballer. And again, a cultured finish that centre half's in a pass. We talk about Sean Dyche scoring a, head, <laughs> uh, scoring a goal for yeah. uh, Chesterfield in the semi final in 97. <laughs> Very different goals yeah. to, to, to what those would have been or a Sean Dyche classic would have been. I think that he, he's, he's imposing but delicate at the same mm. time. And I think it, it is just a testament to sometimes you don't need to be what the old school football looks like anymore. Football's not the same anymore. And I think there is a transition of, of, of what, what people's you know, favourite position is. Are, are, you know, maybe moving forward, it, it isn't about playing all kind of roles and mm -hmm. actually just making sure your, your attributes in that specific game fit, fit that formation. But for Christensen, I think you know, he's been in and out a little bit. Um, he's obviously um, been, you know, kind of just, I feel he's been is it quite quiet. I don't, I don't, doesn't mm. get, it seems quite quiet, doesn't get the, 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 the rewards or kind of the accolades that, that he deserves. But he's another talent come through. Um, and there's so many, you forget, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You're absolutely right, yeah. like you said, earlier, like a conveyor belt, isn't it? Someone that's played his part in, in developing all of those players and will forever be remembered for his impact on Cobham has been Jody Morris, who has been tweeting about uh, one of the debutants today. Lewis Hall having a great debut, well done, young man. And also, fair play to Tuchel again, embracing the young players in the Chelsea Academy. Jo Jody Morris is so important yeah. to this journey, right? Yeah. So important to all of that. And we're going to come on to that, but this brings us on to our knee jerk reaction, firstly, in fact, which is. Lewis Hall say was 30 million quid in the January transfer window. <laughs> this, this is the Jody Morris effect, because Lewis Hall today has shown that he could play left side of a three, 
He could play left wing back. He could mm -hmm. play centre midfield. Very good technically. Yeah. The assist that we saw again, and I know, and I know you have to. You have to level it to a certain extent of mm -hmm. the opposition that we're playing against, and it's not the same capabilities of coming in and doing a job at Arsenal and coming and doing a job away at Tottenham or something like that. But we saw it with Tarek Lamptey a couple of years ago away at the Emirates. And like we've already mentioned, these players are good enough technically. Yeah. They've got the right temperament, they've got the right mentality because of the impact that Jody Morris has had, Neil Barth and, and so many others, uh, Andy Myers and so many more that have been through the academy. But that's the case now, isn't it? We do have, like you said, a ready-made pool of players to go, OK, we need someone... Here we go. Here's a ready-made Premier League level player. Yeah, we we have players that are ready, waiting for their opportunity to to step into in, into the first team. So, I mean, look, Jody Morris. I don't know what he's doing and how he's how he's <laughs> yeah. done this because it, it all seems like they're from his generations. You know, I know it's been a, a long a long period of time, um, but it's like everyone is good now. It's 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 not like other academies. We are we are spoiled at Cobham because. We are not just making them for ourselves, but the, we're giving yeah. them to the Premier League. We're giving them to, to teams Absolutely. all over the world. Mm. You know, so we are, you know, one of the leading uh, academies in the world, and because of, of of people like Jody Morris being able to get the best out of the young players and working out almost what future football will look yeah. like, because these players are so talented, and you know, that a centre back like rounded, now creating rounded people. Yeah, yeah. Right? it's right? uh, centre backs yeah. with the same touch and, and technique as a as a yeah. winger it's, you know it's crazy <laughs> so yeah it's, it's it's special times absolutely right uh, speaking of lewis hall he spoke to lee a few moments ago lewis first of all huge congratulations how's it been Thank for you, you today uh, it's a dream come true really uh something i've worked towards since i was a kid uh growing up through the academy and uh, finally got my opportunity today so just got to thank everyone my family um, and then the manager, obviously, and um, the fans are making me feel welcome and um, like kind of killing the nerves a little bit. Yeah. You took it all in your stride. Yeah. When did you first find out that you were playing? Um, during the day, today. Um, uh, we, we, got, we got the team line-up, or the starting eleven, And, um, yeah, I was, I see, when I saw my name, just instant shock and, like, nerve-wracking for a couple of hours and just had to, like, sit there for a bit and just think, wow, this, this is the day, like... And, yeah, as soon as I stepped onto the pitch, I think, the, every, with the fans behind me and everyone wanting me to do well and stuff, it just gave me motivation and confidence to do what I, what I can do. You look so comfortable from first minute to the last. You grew in the game, a couple of assists as well. Could it have gone much better? Not really, to be honest. I think, I think I've got to thank, thank my teammates as well for allowing me to... Um, have the game that I did and uh, I think uh, also the manager as well for the chance to uh, express myself on the pitch and yeah finally the fans like getting behind me and making me feel part of it. So it was a very special atmosphere we were talking off camera weren't we with this is the fifth level that you've played yeah. at this year I mean that, that's development for you isn't it? Yeah I know I think first couple of games of the season I started in the under 18s and then just worked my way up and uh, finally uh, achieved what my, my obviously my aim my aim is at Chelsea and just oh, I can't lots of words really. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised but you're also incredible you're the youngest ever Chelsea player to start an FA Cup tie I mean that's another badge yeah. of honour for you yeah. the list goes on <laughs> yeah I didn't know that to be fair <laughs> yeah proud moment obviously um, yeah I don't know what to say. No, really. I'm not surprised. I'm not, look, it's been an emotional day, yeah. I'm sure, for you, for your family. I mean, what is, I mean, the sky's the limit. What, what else do you want to achieve this year now? Um, obviously, the, at the start of the season, my, my aims, I've ex, um, achieved my aims already, and I've gone beyond of what I, what I wanted to achieve. So I suppose when I get home, I just have to take a couple of days to take it all in and then think about what's next. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Brilliant. We'll let you get in the warm. Cheers. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, Lewis. Top man. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Fantastic. Do you know, that is the first time, yeah. we've all just said it, that is the first time today you notice he's 17 years of age because yeah. he's been so yeah. mature and he's put such a composed finish that... That's that. That's the kind of the, the yeah. most nervous he's looked all day. And I mean, oh, I Lee Parker's right. not imposing, but <laughs> what what an incredible day yeah. for him. And again, you know, we don't we don't want to kind of make out these. He's sort of a, a young a young man as yeah. such because 
he's put a performance in today that I'm sure there are many professionals that have played 10, 15 years to be yeah. proud of. He was phenomenal today. Yeah, very mature performance. Uh, I even, you know, he has got a baby face in the, in the end. And I think you could see how much that meant to him. Mm. Oh, like his family, the atmosphere. I, I felt quite emotional actually watching it because the, uh, talking about, the, you know, the, the, the Jody Morris and bringing all these players through, Every single day they're in their tra training, training and giving it their all. And when they get the opportunity, to actually take the opportunity, because some people don't take the opportunities, because uh, unfortunately that's just how it works. And he did. And um, yeah, what, what, a, what a fantastic young man. Fantastic. And again, a very big future. Congratulations to Lewis Hall and his family and friends will be so incredibly proud. And I'll be honest with you, Dan, every Chelsea fan on the planet will be so proud of him tonight. 100%. You know, it's, it's weird because they, they'll come out with nerves and almost thank the... the the crowd yeah. for for making them feel welcome. We've been wait we've been waiting for this as, as well yeah. as you have. You know we've been following the PR two and your journey and, and all of that. And you know whenever we see someone young coming coming into the squad, we are excited to see them. You know and and the nerves are obviously always going to be there when it's your debut and when you're young. But hopefully now he realizes that you know he does belong at this level. Um, and you know for that to be your debut and, and for you to have all those nerves means that it's going to be pretty scary when, when he has no nerves yeah. and really feels like he belongs. Absolutely right. Making your debut in front of 40,000 people at home, yeah, didn't, didn't miss a beat. Uh, another Lewis that, that's made his, uh, his Chelsea bow again today, uh, Lewis Baker, seven or eight years on from making his last Chelsea appearance. He's, he's had a lot of uh, loan moves away, Lewis Baker, but this is a nice one. Good for Lewis Baker. Uh, Well-deserved time on the pitch for Chelsea. Been a long road, glad he gets some minutes at the bridge. He's, he's spent a lot of time out on loan, Claire, Lewis yeah. Baker, but he's, he's anyone that's watched any PL2 game or any Chelsea game, to be fair, development game over the last couple of years, knows how good he is technically a very good footballer very similar to like we're saying about all the all the common yeah, boys yeah. technically very very clever very good on a ball but again it shows clearly a desire and a hunger and I think Thomas Tuchel said he would have been involved at Brentford weren't it for a for a positive Covid yeah. test so it's about mentality and he's, he's Lewis has shown that he's he's available and he's ready to go yeah hard work pays off you know going away on loan and having to kind of start not start again but go there's an opportunity here it might not be at my home but I can take this opportunity here, grow, learn as much as I can and come back. And he's gone away multiple times and done so. And to almost finally get a bit of redemption for the hard work. Um, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I mean, when he came on as well, he was very calm, cool. He's, he's a mature player now. And, um, and I'm sure he looked around him and, and kind of enjoyed, enjoyed coming on at that moment and was able to relax. And just another proud moment for him, really. Absolutely right. And Dan, a little bit of a, a kind of redemption arc for him as well, because like a lot of the boys, he spent a bit of time alone at Vitesse in Holland and was mm -hmm. exceptional over there quite early on in his career. He was a top goal scorer as Vitesse went and won the Dutch FA Cup. So maybe he's got a little bit of little bit of business and fancies a cup run in this country. Yeah, maybe. And he came on and he looked comfortable. Mm. Really, he looked like he'd been playing top flight football. He really did, you know, just just generally the way he takes the ball, he, he oozes a confidence that you only get from you know having played some games um so yeah it, look we've got so many young <laughs> talented so many. i wish we could play them all <laughs> yeah. honestly i really do um but unfortunately we can only field 11 at a time and and everyone's gonna have to take their chance when they get them absolutely right special mention for charlie webster as well didn't get on today but another young man that's that's definitely gonna make his chelsea debut in the not too distant future involved in the match day squad today uh, let's get some more show some media reaction then this is this is quite a nice one as well uh, from scott i never like to see chelsea concede and love a clean sheet but i'll accept this one just to let chesterfield have their moment to remember that's exactly it isn't it claire you know again even the most ardent chelsea fans as we are yeah. chesterfield brought a lot to the game today Fans brought a lot of noise. They made a long journey down on a, on a drizzly Saturday, yeah. early January. A lot of people will be sort of clinging to money after a difficult year yeah. and Christmas as well. So it means a lot today. And they've had their moment. Players will go away and remember that. And they deserve that because they, they did bring a lot to the game today. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of young Ch Chesterfield fans, you know, when they look back 10 years time and say, you know, I was at that game. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it's about, isn't it? FA Cup making memories. You know, I was saying I was on the train down, there was loads of families chanting. That is what it's all about. And that gave them something to, to cheer about, doesn't it? So, I mean, yes, we'll give them that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. Ch Chesterfield were brilliant today. Fans and, and team and staff and players alike. Uh, time to hear from the man in charge, Thomas Tuchel. Thomas, congratulations. Was that the, the perfect professional performance? Never perfect, but very <laughs> professional. And uh, throughout the complete first half and in the beginning of the second half until 5-0, we would have wished for some more goals, some more big chances in, in the following minutes. 
but we had also many changes and uh, were a bit running, running out of, of defenders in the end of the match. So unfortunately, we conceded one goal. But in general, everything is fine because we approached the match very seriously and decided it very early. Was it important to manage the minutes of some of your players? Yeah, yeah, it was very important and had not so much to do with the result. This was some some decisions were made before, and um, I think we 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 go out of the game with no injuries, which is very important and with the win that we wanted. 45 minutes for Matteo, 45 for Ruben. Both looked sharp today, didn't they? Yeah, good. Um, now we have to see if we have a reaction for Ruben for Ruben's Achilles. Matteo is, is, is strong, very strong since he came back again. So you see what we missed also for weeks and weeks. It's good to have him back as a top professional, top player. We spoke about young players pre-match, didn't we? How impressed were you with Lewis Hall today? <clears throat> he did what he did in training. And it's also credit to the guys around him, like, uh, like Saul, like Matteo, like, like Malang. Makes things easy for him. Uh, dressing room is very supportive. Uh, for these players, uh, the environment is a good environment that they can can show their level, and then in the end they need to show it. And uh, with all the tension and uh, being a bit nervous, playing in front of a of a of a big crowd, but he did well. He was involved in in goals, and uh, he has uh, a lot of things to learn. But th that's why he's with us, and uh, now it's the moment to continue. So another game in the busy schedule to look forward to, but you must be proud to progress in this competition once again. Yeah, yeah, this is good. I mean, uh, we demanded this win from us and we expected it uh, from us. And uh, so there's no need now to get overexcited, but uh, the job is done and um, we can be happy and enjoy the free Sunday tomorrow. Good. Thanks, boss. Great. Appreciate it. Ciao. The biggest thing I took from that, Dan, is what we alluded to before the game, which you could tell from the first minute of the team sheet coming out, which is Thomas Tuchel is very much about getting business done. There are certain standards to meet, and he's happy with today. But let's not get carried away. We've got a job to do. Yeah, he, as far as he's concerned, he cares about the bottom line. Get three points, get wins, get you know clean sheets, um, and it's, it's how it's how it should be. You know, um, at Chelsea, we can't get too carried away with good performances if they don't come with good results. Um, it's a results business at the end of the day, and. Tommy Tuchel, he gets results. That, that, that's it, Claire, isn't it? And that's the difference, isn't it? Because from my point of view, sentimentally, I wanted all the young lads to get yeah. an opportunity today to make their debuts, to get a, a big reaction as they come on at Stamford Bridge. When the penalty was given, I was willing Hakim Ziyech to give it to Lewis Hall and make his <laughs> debut and make whatever. But, but that's the difference, isn't it? Thomas Tuchel is... There's sentiment, but there's also being the Chelsea manager, which carries a larger responsibility. And like Dan said, that is... Bottom line, let's get a result, let's get a performance and let's put the groundwork in for, for more important things. Yeah, the bigger picture, it always has to be the headline, doesn't it? And I think it's a stepping stone and the sentiment, I was the same. I was like, come on, let them come on and play. But it is about that, Look, get the job done early, which, which you did. They, you know, tick, tick, tick. And I, I know that before a game, they'll have a set of tick boxes that they, they want to achieve. And that's sometimes how it is. You can't, there's no room for sentiment sometimes, um, especially when you're a club like Chelsea, when the expectation is to win everything. So in order to do so, yes, we have the, the depth to do so, but actually it's not always about the, the, you know, the emotional storylines, even though it is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're right. There's still plenty of football coming up this week for you, so make sure you join us for it. Wednesday evening is a big one, second leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final, away to Tottenham Hotspur. Join us for Matchday Live from 7pm. Friday afternoon, Thomas Tuchel will be sitting down speaking to the press ahead of an away trip in the Premier League to Manchester City. And then Thursday evening, join us for this one, 6.55. You can watch a lot of the next generation in the FA Youth Cup Live. Chelsea away to Watford in the fourth round. Uh, so obviously fourth round of the FA Cup. Who do we want next round? Just a lower league team, that'd be nice. I don't know, I'm not even going to predict because I'll end up, <laughs> we'll end up getting Liverpool or something. Yeah. Like Dan, any specifics? <laughs> uh, just a team that is a... <laughs> An easy day's work, if yeah. possible. Yeah, but not Tottenham at home. Tottenham at home will do. Yeah, yeah. Not steady. Not steady, steady. <laughs> Thank you very much. Brilliant as always, both of you. What a good day then. The magic of the FA Cup is very much still alive. Just ask Lewis Hall, ask Marcus Bettinelli, and ask the Chelsea fans that are going. I'm very happy. Chelsea are in the fourth round of the Emirates FA Cup. Have a good evening.